Today I'm going to show you guys the break and retest trading strategy, which is a personal trading strategy that I use all the time whenever I'm swing trading, scalping, day trading, anything, any style of trading. This is one simple effective strategy that works across different time frames and across different uh, trading styles as well. I've already done a video on trading the trend. So we're going to implement a little bit of that as well, just understanding multiple time frame analysis, the structure and trading with the, the trend. And that's really how this break and retest strategy is going to work uh, when you're looking at whether it's a scalp, whether it's a day trade or whether it's a swing trade. So make sure that you guys are always trading with the trend. If you have not watched that video, I would highly recommend that you go back and watch that. That's kind of one of the fundamental uh, steps to understand the financial markets and the technical analysis. So this strategy is going to be very effective when you pair that up with trading with the trend. So let's go ahead and get started with the higher time frames and then go ahead and drop down to the lower time frames and finally start looking for our entries. So I'm going to walk you through my entire thought process. In the beginning of the week, what I start off with is looking at the monthly and the weekly time frames, and I mark off any uh, levels that the price needs to tap into right now or that it needs it has already broken through and we're just waiting for price to either respect support or resistance there so with that being said right now what we're looking at is the overall structure on the weekly time frame what are some of the important zones and where are some levels that price needs to break through right now in order for us to look for our trading opportunity really quick all right perfect so right now uh, we are on thursday october 12th and we're going to take a look at what price has been doing here already this entire week so as we see that price has been pushing up this is the current weekly high that price rejected anytime we are marking off levels on the higher time frames we want to confirm across the different multiple time frames how many times has price reacted here and how has it reacted here so these higher time frame levels are always going to be very important because Whenever price does break, break past these levels, it's always going to react heavily. So that means either there's going to be retracements or there's going to be consolidation before a continuation in whichever direction that price is headed. So this is very important information because when you are scalping, a lot of the times traders will not hop up to the higher time frames, the weekly, monthly, daily, and they will end up taking a trade maybe about 5, 10 pips away from that weekly, daily, monthly levels. And then when price has those massive wave rejections or it reacts in a certain way, they're left confused about why did that happen? Why did I just get waked out? And then, you know, price ends up continuing in their direction anyways. So in order to avoid that, make sure that regardless of what of whatever style of trading is that you're hopping up to the daily weekly and the monthly levels and you're making sure that as price approaches these levels you're also very uh, cognizant of the type of trades that you're taking and making sure that you're not taking a trade you know just five pips away from uh, that monthly weekly or daily level because price will react there heavily so with that being said we have that weekly top with rejection we know that when we drop down to lower time frames this is either going to end up being our partial or tp depending on if the lower time frames are in alignment with this bullish uh, trend that we have been seeing just in this weekly time frame here another level that i'm going to mark off is the current support that price has been making so that would be that bottom with rejection because that is the lowest that price has come down to this week made a bottom with rejection rejected those sellers and then pushed right back up so those are two levels I'm going to mark off. We also do have minor levels that I can already kind of see based off the weekly time frame, but I'm going to drop down to the daily just so you guys can see a little bit more clearly when it comes to price action, and it'll be easier for you to mark out those levels as well. So now coming on to the daily time frame, I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so we see everything here to the left. And as you can see right now where price is kind of hanging around, that has been an area of interest in the sense that, as we can see here, that there's a lot of consolidation resistance right there that's being formed that break and retest before price pushes back up and then same thing here where you have those wick rejections and then price pushes back down and then even most recently we see that price has been reacting into this area with a little support support and then a push back up here as well so zoom out so you guys can see that a little bit more clearly same thing here and then that resistance and that's kind of where price is sitting at with the current daily candle where you have that bottom wick rejection right there and the price is rejecting so as long as we can maintain above this area we have those potential buy opportunities to come back up into this 1885 or even potentially a little bit higher than that 
come on to the four hour time frame. So quick recap, what we just did on the last two time frames is we marked off the key levels and then we confirmed what has price been doing at those levels and marked off any uh, minor zones. For example, this blue zone here that price is reacting to at the moment. So whenever you're trading, make sure that even if you're looking at the higher time frames, you're not marking off levels that are weeks or months ahead in time. Instead, you're marking off levels that price is reacting to at the moment. And that's really going to help you look for your trading opportunities uh, at the moment and make sure that you're not just waiting too long in the markets or having FOMO or anything like that. When we come on to the four hour time frame, same thing where this level we have seen price trying to push down below it holds on to a support. You get a nice retracement right here a top wick rejection, and then a massive push down. Here, we respected that as support, pushed back up, came back, held onto a support here. So we know that essentially what we're looking for any buy opportunities, we wanna see momentum like here to the left. So we wanna be catching a movement like that, right here where price is holding onto a support and then a push back up. And that's potentially our trading opportunity. And then we can use higher timeframes to analyze, you know, where's price headed from there. So is it just going to re uh, reject here and then push back down? Or are we looking for a continued trade, given that based off a of lower time frame or higher time frames, we have a uh, price holding onto a strong support here and now it's pushing up. So the whole point right now, as we're dropping down to lower time frames, is just to confirm what is price doing right now and how can we take advantage of wherever this trend is. So when you look at higher time frames, the trend here obviously is that we are in the short term bear structure right around here. So from the high on gold, we have rejected, we're pushing down. So that's why uh, this level here is very crucial in the sense that are we simply just coming back here to grab liquidity as we did here before a nice sell-off? Same thing, we came pretty much close to this level here as well with that wick rejection and then another sell-off. Are we going to hold on to this area of support and then come back and tap into those previous high levels almost in that 2061 mark? Um, same thing here, checks off, rejects that, sells right back down, rejects that, sells right back down, right? So this is why this level of 1885, almost 500, is very important to see what is price going to do here. And we're not taking any further, you know, buy opportunities or anything like that as price approaches very close to this zone, because we do want to make sure that we're not getting caught on the wrong side of the trade. Coming up to the hourly time frame. Now on the hourly time frame, as you drop down to lower time frames, you will understand that you know higher time frames may show you short term bear structure, but when you drop down to those lower time frames, you are going to see a change of structure. So right now here, for example, we are bullish uh, because we do need to fulfill those higher time frame structures for that bearish momentum. You need something like that. That is a typical bearish uh, momentum to the downside. That bearish structure. But in order for this movement to happen on the weekly or the daily time frame, the one hour, the four hour, the 30 minute, they do need to be bullish. And those are the type of trades that we are taking advantage of until we reach a point that aligns with the higher time frame structure, which in this case we saw in the weekly time frame, it was bearish. So once it taps into those levels here, and then we can look for those continued sales. And then when the sellers are taking profit, again, we're riding the wave to come right back up. So with this break and retest strategy, you can use this, whether it's a bear structure, bullish structure, it doesn't really matter as long as you're trading with the trend and you're understanding the trend. On the one hour time frame, we're holding onto a nice support. Price is still pushing above this area. What I would like to see is price just holding onto this area support in general and keep pushing up bullish. So as of right now, we're still bullish here on the hourly time frame, 30 minute. We had a nice retracement from right at that level. We held onto a support here. Now we're pushing back up and now we're coming back and respecting uh, a little support area here. So before I look for an entry, what I do want to see is price clearing these wick highs right here on the 30 minute time frame. And that is an entry point that I can take where we can ride the wave to come up to this 1885. You can check the 15 minute as well. As you can see, we're not really closing in this zone. We have wick rejections and then we're coming back. And we're closing above that zone. So that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna take a look at and make sure that we're not you know getting on the wrong side of the trade. This is currently the Tokyo and the Asian session basically. Um, so we're just gonna be a little bit more patient here because price does move a little bit more slowly. Um, and then we're gonna see you know how long can we end up uh, holding this trade out for. I personally like to use this strategy for scalps and then turning them into swing trades. 
I do work a little bit backwards in the sense of my entry because I think first in my entire trading strategy in my trading career, I always think about my risk management first. So regardless of what type of investment that you're doing, whether it's the stock market, whether it's Forex, whether it's crypto, whether it's anything else, you always want to be thinking about risk management. That's one of the key principles of investing. And so for me, what I always think about as the price is moving and I'm in the market, I'm looking for, you know, where can I place my stop loss? Where would I be comfortable placing my stop loss and having the biggest risk to reward here? So obviously as price is pushing up, we don't have any confirmations of sell opportunities here just yet. So we're not really going to be entertaining any sales unless price can break below this zone. For buys, I'm just waiting for price to break above here. That way I can place my stop loss somewhere down here. And then as price pushes up, as you can see, we have a much bigger risk to reward here. So here I'm waiting for as price is surpassing this, can we pass up that other wick rejection right there? If that happens, then I'm placing my stop loss here. And then this is going to be my TP level. And I'll show you guys how to also take partials along the way. So at any given point, another thing about my risk management strategy is I'm never risking more than 3% of my account. So this is a $1,000 account that here we're practicing with. Um, so I can show you guys that the strategy is going to work across any type of account size that you have. But at no point am I ever going above 3%. I like to stay between that 2%. That's a sweet spot because now I can take partials. I can move my stop loss to break even or I can trail my stop loss into profits. And 3% is only for setups where I know 100% that this is going to work out. So, for example, when I'm trading news, when it comes to high impact news, um, you know, I look at the data points, what's happening when it comes to NFP. The entire week you have challenger job cuts coming out, you have ADP non-farm coming out, you have every week unemployment claims coming out. Understanding all of those data points are going to lead you, lead you to understand what's going to uh, come out with NFP. So obviously the Fed is going to be watching what happens with employment and they'll watch out for inflation data as well, right? So now with both of those, um, you know, you can follow the, the news, but I'm only going to use 3% risk on that. So now as price is surpassing those previous levels, what I'm going to do is end up taking a 1%. Uh, I'm going to risk 1% of my account. I'm going to look for a buy opportunity. So I'm going to place my stop loss right below that wick because this 30 minute candle is still open. So I'm going to give it enough room to breathe. But basically what I'm saying here is that price should not be breaking the previous 30 minute low if it is going to continue pushing bullish. So now with that being said, we're going to come up and I'm going to place my TP right here. You can adjust your TP as you're moving into profits, um, and I'll show you guys how to do that as well if the opportunity presents. But as of right now, I'm keeping my TP up here, so now I have a 5 to 1 risk to reward. So price keeps pushing right into those levels, 15 minute. Same thing, we close bullish here, and this new candle is really the candle where we're taking entry. As you can see, there's a little bit of a, a wider spread right now in the market. You can take a look at the hourly time frame as well. That This is that break and retest setup that you're essentially looking for. So as you can see on the 15 or 30 minute, you have price push up, give you a retest into that area, and now it's pushing above that as well. On the one hour time frame, the one hour time frame, uh, one candle on the one hour time frame is made up of two 30 minute candles. So that's why that's your break and retest. Essentially what break and retest strategy is, is price breaking above or below an important level or a zone, retesting that level as a support or resistance. And then your entry is really on the third or fourth candle where that fourth, third or fourth candle is continuing in the direction that it's breaking out in. So for example, here, price came up, held onto a support, and it broke above this zone. This next candle here gave you a little bit of top wick, came back, rejected the sellers down here. So it retested this area or this zone as the new support. And this third candle, again, giving you a little bit of bottom wick. So if you know the basics of candlestick anatomy, uh, the bottom wick on a bullish candle is a liquidity grab. That's a liquidity wick. And then price starts to push up above this area. And then that's really where you're taking the entry. When you drop down to the 30 minute, uh, you're going to see the same exact formation just with a little bit of more candle price action happening here. So with this candle where price pushed up and closed bullish, the next two 30 minute candles, which make up that one bearish one hour candle, came back and they closed right above that support zone. And the following 30 minute candle is really where we took that entry. And it broke above after price broke the previous high right here. That's really where we took that entry. Because when price breaks the high in a bullish structure, that's giving you confirmation of, okay, I'm ready to just continue pushing out of here. So that is your break and retest. You're going to apply the same thing. 
and a bearish trend when price is pushing back down. So essentially same thing there where price is pushing down uh, below this area. What we did was uh, close below this consolidation area here and then price came up, retested that area and your entry would essentially be on this candle as it breaks these lows. So make sure that when you're using the break and retest strategy, you're not entering too early, you know, somewhere down here or anything like that. You're waiting for your confirmation. Your confirmation is price breaking the high if you're looking for buy opportunities or it's breaking the lows if you're looking for sell opportunities. If you enter too early, you would end up in a situation like this where price did you know, start pushing up a little bit bullish, but you had no liquidity grab. The following candle is the one that gave you a liquidity grab here. So we're going to skip through as price keeps pushing. So as you can see, just by risking 1%, you're already up by over 1% in your account. And now here, what we're looking for, if you're looking for a scaling opportunity or, you know, you want to come in with another 1%, again, you should not be risking more than 3% of your account size, especially if you're starting off in trading. But now what we're going to look for is, you know, can we see that continued momentum to the upside here? Or if you want to scale in, as you can see, price is starting to slow down in its volume. You wait for another break and retest, and then you look for another entry to the upside. So we're coming here close to the end of um, Asian session and start of London session. So you want to be a little bit more careful because London session and New York session tend to be a lot more volatile. All right, so here it is. Same thing, price is starting to push up. It held on to a support. So if you want to take a scaling opportunity, this would be your, your chance. You confirm that with the multiple time frame analysis, you drop down to the 15 minute. We held on to a nice support. We ended up closing bearish. You got a liquidity grab here and price is pushing up. Let's hop up to the one hour time frame. So same thing where the one hour time frame pushed up, made a bottom wick rejection here, rejected those sellers, came back and closed around this level. And then let's see if this candle can break those highs. If that happens, you place your stop loss here and your TP is still up there. This is what you would call a scale-in. A scale-in is essentially when you have already taken one entry and now you're looking for an entry with another, another uh, setup, essentially. So as price is breaking those highs, we're going to come in with just another 1%. So, so far, you're risking only 2% of your account. We're going to come up. We're still going to target that area and let's place our stop loss somewhere down here. This is the hourly time frame. You can absolutely use some of the lower time frames as well. So as of right now, based off the 15 minute and 30 minute, I'm going to place my stop loss here. So even with, you know, almost four to one risk reward, you still have um, good momentum to the upside that you're still trading. So price is pushing up. So just by risking 2%, you're already up by 5% in your account. You can use higher time frames at this point. What I would be doing is trying to take some partials or moving my stop loss to break even. So let me show you how I would manage my trade here. So what I would do first is close partials. So I'm just closing 50% out. That way I'm making sure that I'm securing uh, some profits here along the way. What I'm also going to do is move my second trades stop loss to break even. So that way we have already pushed up so bullish, we really should not be coming back down into this area here if we are just gonna continue pushing above right there, right? So at that point, I'm just moving it to break even. So that would be the second trade right here. I'm going to move this to break even here. I'm going to trail my stop loss pretty much at the same exact level for my first entry. So my first entry is this 1873, 272 right there. I'm going to remove that and add this right here. So now for my first trade, I'm already in profits. And even if price does reverse and hit my trail stop loss, and then for my second trade, I would be sitting at the break even point, but I've already secured partials for both. So I have secured some profits for both already. Now, based off of the four hour time frame, as price is pushing above these areas, we really should not be having any trouble breaking past this 1885 um, mark that we marked off on the four hour time frame, the weekly time frame, and the daily time frame. So let's hop up to the, the weekly time frame. We're pushing back up above in this area. If you wanted to trail your, or if you want to move your TP, then you would do the same thing where it is, you know, where is price headed next after this point? So after price clears this 1885, 
where is it headed next? So at that point, what I would do is bring it up a little bit higher. You're doing the same thing where you're marking off, you know, when price clears above this, where was the next area that price made a resistance or a support? So in this case, you look further back to the left. When price cleared above this 1885, that was the last area that price made a resistance into, and then it sold off from there. We came back, made a resistance into that, sold off from there. Same thing here. We ended up respecting this area as support for this consolidation. You come closer to the most recent price action, and same thing there as well, where price respected this area as support before a retracement, and then came right back down below this and pushed right back up with projections. So you're looking for where has price been reacting the most in general after one level has been cleared out. On the daily time frame, you see that support being formed here. You see that support being formed there. And then you come on to the four hour time frame, pretty much clear price action until price is coming back down into this zone here. So that's where I'm going to move this TP and I'll make sure that my next one also follows. So for my both of my entries, I'm moving my TP a little bit higher. So this is your break and retest strategy that I'm uh, showing you guys, along with my risk management that I usually do on my trades. So let's go ahead and do some next bar. So price is clearing out of that. You hop up to the daily time frame and you see the same exact break and retest strategy being played out on the daily time frame as well. Price broke above that zone. The next daily candle came here and it rejected right into that area, pushed back up, closed bullish. Now, if you're looking for a swing trade opportunity, you can absolutely use this daily in the four hour time frame break and retest as well. So you would now take an entry as price clears above this 1885 and then it heads right back up. Even on the daily time frame, you don't really have any other level where price is having hiccups until it approaches this 1900, 902 mark. So we're doing next here. So after price approaches up into that area, after a massive bullish push up, we need to see some sort of a retest being formed. So that was that price is pushing up. Now, 1885 is a very important level. You are not taking an entry here or you're not taking a scale in opportunity here until price can give you a break and retest at this level or some sort of a retracement. But now that we have cleared above that area, what you can do is, again, chill your stop losses and make sure that you're still moving into profits. So here. What I would do is come onto my trades. We still have a two penny and three penny. You can still take some uh, partials here, which is what I would do at that 50%. So I know, you know that those are not big lot sizes, but the whole point here is to show you how the strategy also works on smaller accounts. That's how I have built out my small account. So here I'm gonna up my stop loss. And I'm going to place it right here, which was that previous bottom wave rejection, and then price is pushing up. So you accept that. And then same thing here. Accept that. And then we let this run. So here would be another potential entry to the upside. There you go. So that is insanely bullish momentum, as you can see, based off the hourly and even the four hour time frame. Price pushes up and ultimately it hits your TP just basing off of those 1% uh, risk trades that you have taken, two of them. So risking 2% of your account based off of that one momentum to the upside that we have been catching, you're up 11% in your account. So that is a simple break and retest strategy that you can use across different time frames. Even the daily time frame, I showed you guys how there was a break and retest that was setting up here, pushing up right into those uh, previous areas of support. So I hope this video was helpful. And this is a personal trading strategy that I use regardless of whatever the trend is in the market.